How to install Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform 2.4 on uh, anything. Now I'm going to run inside my MacBook, so with Apple Silicon. This is an ARM processor, so we need a special version that is available since this release. So I'm super excited. First of all, let me jump on the Red Hat website and as you can see this is a virtualized environment on top of uh, a normal MacBook. So this is officially supported by Red Hat and we can run the ARM version uh, Red Hat called Arch64. So let me log in into my Red Hat customer portal. Uh, first things we need to download actually the packages. So let me jump to the download section and find it out the Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform link. Okay, cool. Uh, we will be redirected to this page where you can select the correct version, in my case 2.4 for RHEL 9. And uh, let me select the architecture of my processor, in this case Arch64. Yes, because I was running, as you can see, a virtual machine inside my VMware Fusion. There are different virtualization uh, options and let me download the bundle. If you don't know, so basically there are two options. Uh, you can uh, use the installer online or the bundle. The bundle is just a package that uh, group together all the necessary file. It's a bit bigger because it's nearly 2 gigabyte but it included all the packages and uh, whatever we need. I think it is the best option and also the recommended way. So one way, once we are done, it depends on the speed of the network and the performance of your machine, we will find out the file inside our system. We need to jump on a terminal and start the actual installation. So let's find out the file inside downloads directory. Let me decompress uh, the startball. As you can see, this is specific for the ARM, but the same step you can apply to uh, Intel, AMD, and also other supported um, architecture. So basically, steps are the same because the, this is only a different uh, um, packages. So let me decompress the archive, the performance, my VI depends by performance of your system. I was using the command line tar with the option ZXVF specifying the file to decompress. As you can see, we are seeing all the packages. In this case, there are RPM, the actual packages that uh, will be installed in our system, and there are packages for Enterprise Linux 8 and Enterprise Linux 9. So this tarball is actually uh, useful for both the architecture. So, for both, oh, sorry, the operating system. This is specific for uh, ARM architecture, so you can't use on uh, Intel processors. Anyway, now we have our packages and we are ready for installing. So, the installer is actually based on Ansible and he need uh, an inventory file to, to run. So, we just need to set it up some parameter according to the manual. In this case, I'm going to install like a, an Ansible controller on a single node. Let me check it out, the hostname. In this case, this is the default of installation that is localhost. I'm going to show you that localhost is not a valid hostname. So let me put localhost inside automation controller section and let me define also Ansible underscore connection equal local. This is to override the default connection that is SSH. So we need to define a couple of passwords. The admin password, this is the web UI uh, login password and also the database password. The default is Red Hat and uh, if you need to install other, okay, registry is very useful uh, if you need to download the uh, Ansible automation uh, execution environment. If you are going to install Automation Hub, you need to define the login password and the database password as well. Same things will, uh, will be for the uh, other services. This is Automation Event Driven Controller. Same story, you define the password and the database. 
we are not going to install automation control automation even driven controller or nor uh, automation hub in this stage so we want only one node with automation controller this is the simplest installation but it will point it out uh, some interesting things as you can see this is package decompressed is about 2 gigabyte on hard drive so make sure that you have enough space okay one of the mm, ch first checking of the installer is actually that is able to run and it pointed out that uh, we can't use localhost in our system so let me define a proper fully qualified domain name for this system so we need to i need to switch to root user and uh, let me define the host name for this host for example ap dot example dot com so example dot com is my domain and this machine will be called uh, ap okay is still uh, hostname return still uh, this uh, local host so let me customize also etc host to be able to resolve locally to the correct ip address okay let me define ap dot example dot com and AAP. I was binding to localhost but it's better to bind on your static IP. Okay cool we have a host name set it up and I think we are good to go. Let me set also temporarily aap.example.com using hostname command. So now we our system is called aapexample.com we need just to edit the inventory file and update with this hostname. If you did it before, you are not going to encounter this uh, error during the first run. Okay, now let's run the setup again. Dot slash setup dot, dot uh, sh. We are expecting now to move forward a little bit. And let me s point it out another possible error. Okay, this machine does not have sufficient RAM to run Ansible Automation Platform. This error uh, came out when you are running in a machine with less than 8 GB of RAM. Yes, I know, um, this is a requirement, very strict. However, um, especially for development purposes on your laptop, sometimes you don't really have 8 GB of RAM, especially on, um, on the on the MacBook, uh, the M1 doesn't really have all this amount of RAM. The only way to override is actually to customize one file. So this is the pre-flight collection checking. So you can uh, search for this error message and ending up in this role, that is a pre-flight role. And there is a default, so where the variable, Ansible variable are defined. As you can see, these are the parameter for the check of the requirement memory and we can lower just uh, to 400 in this way we actually override this parameter this means that uh, we will be able to run uh, less automation script so we'll be more limited but the system will still install with all the necessary components however i advise you not to allocate less than 4 GB of RAM because I think this is the bare minimum for all the type of service to run smoothly even in a development environment with uh, limited capabilities okay this will be not supported by this is what the uh, how, how you can see is moving forward the installer is actually proceeding is doing all the necessary steps uh, we don't need to worry about anything now we are just watching and watching the watching the log and everything will be set up for us the database the message broker the web services all the necessary system also the uh, network manager all the necessary utilities and that we need it so basically we can enjoy a cup of tea or uh, a coffee and in a blink of an eye everything will be ready so actually you need a couple of minutes i was speeding up uh, this installer for you so you can see exactly what type of messages you are going to encounter but uh, it, it was taking a while to be honest even in a very modern machine because a lot of steps need to be 
check it as you can see also was deployed some ansible execution environment images the good things is that uh, this bundle came with also ansible execution environment so we can use a bundle also in air gapped environment in the end of the day we got this message yes the setup proceed complete the setup process completed successfully yay this means that AAP is successfully installed in our system. As I said, this is a single installer only of automation controller, so we can log in only to the system, but this can show you how we, how we connect. Okay, from the terminal, now we can move to the web browser, and as you can see, we need to type the full address of the server. Mine is running into localhost, so this is the local server and let me connect with a username and password the default is the admin user and the password that we define it in the inventory file on the first run we need to sort it out the ansible automation subscription you can insert your username and password or select the manifest file that you previously downloaded in your system you can get all this information in the Red Hat uh, customer support website. Uh, you can choose, uh, you need to accept uh, the end user, uh, the end user um, uh, term and then you're good to go. As you can see, this is the main UI and there are plenty of options and I'm really excited to have this system finally running on my laptop. Okay. If just in case you need to double check, you can go to the help section and you can see that this is Ansible Automation Platform Controller 4.4.0, which is included in Ansible Automation Platform 2.4. Yes, I'm so excited. Now the sky is the limit. Use your Ansible Automation Controller to automate your journey. Yay, we successfully installed this uh, AP in our system. I'm so excited. Yay! Have a good day!